Daniel too, and uh, everyone who's here tonight sharing this. I'm really grateful for the open mic. That was amazing. Um, this is this is the book. It doesn't come with tabs, <laughs> and uh, it began as um as my master's thesis uh, back in 2012. Um, I spent several years in an ashram of sorts in my late twenties with my first child who was three at the time. And this is that story. So it is a narrative. It has recurring characters and smaller stories within it. So it's a kind of a read from beginning to end deal rather than a dip in and find a poem you like. You would be really confused if you do that. I, it has uh, transcendence and humor and sex and scandal and zany characters. It has a questionable guru, a search for enlightenment and a search for love. And uh, a lot of self-honesty. It took uh, quite a few deep breaths to send this into the world. I'll um, I'll read you uh, about eight poems. And some of you were at my reading at Munro's as well. Right, right before COVID, I launched at Munro's, and uh, I'm so grateful for that. So I'll try not to duplicate the poems I've already read, but I will start with Rupi. Rupi is probably my favorite poem. There are dramatic monologues in this book, um, in the voices of the colorful ashram characters. And uh, I think Rupi is my favorite. For crying out loud, give it a good squeeze and giggle it out. It's not a scrotum, it's a marigold. We're working to a schedule, darling. It must fill and flourish, glorying on the master's birthday. You've two days, two, thirteen beds in this ashram, so I can't be babying you. This isn't fun and games, sweetheart. This is service. And are we dressed for service? Do you imagine we're off to a garden party? You'll be sashaying in the dirt, I say. Wear old clothes and you show up in a sundress? No one here cares about your body, and you don't want these neat little granny rows. You're not crocheting, you're not knitting tea posies. This is a catastrophe of boredom. Dig it all up and start over, and smush them in closer. Ignore the how-to tags altogether. I want abundance, I want excess. Think Marie Antoinette. This is an art form. The trowel is your paintbrush, so sketch the soil. No, no, don't scratch like a cat covering its crap. Use sweeping strokes. Use your whole arm. Don't do what's expected, darling. Go wild. I want spirals. I want galaxies. I want Van Gogh. Think colour bridges. Think tears. We don't want uh, no pansies whimpering in the front row with cosmos tall and wispy in the rear. We don't want your grade school photo. Wonder the forget-me-nots. Like a brook, draw the eye towards my lily pool. People must tumble into the blooms and disappear from the world. I'm envisioning watery fairyland mystery. I'm seeing Monet. Come on, darling, be daring, be outrageous. Look at me, I mean, really, I never do what's expected. What do you guess is under this sarong? Why fronts? I'm loose and fruity as a spring breeze, darling. It's about letting go of who you thought you were. Free yourself from this retro housewife fantasy. Strip off your floral and dirty up, darling. Seriously, just take it off and garden in your underwear. Garden naked. No one cares. So there are uh, several. <laughs> it's weird not hearing people laugh. <laughs> um, there are several poems like that throughout the, the book. Um, that kind of give more information about what's happening and that's a narrative and also um, I break. I, there's a poem that I really want to read, but it's long. Are you guys up for it? It's not long, long. It's like, oh. yeah, okay. This is the first poem in the book and it's called Inventory and I wanted to read it for ages. It has a quote by Nietzsche. Poets treat their experiences shamelessly. They exploit them. Inventory. 
Nine Vipassana meditators stuck in the cycle of craving, five ex-Krishnas, six transcendentals, four Sai Baba devotees, one raped by Adobe at the Puttaparthi ashram, a pair of Ashtanga yoga instructors flipping headstands in back of the dining hall, a visiting Tibetan Buddhist, two Scientologists, 17 grazing seekers hugged by Amma, one spooky Rosicrucian, one moony Wiccan priestess, eight Osho followers pretzeled in tantric rapture, a Brazilian trance healer channeling the famous Dr. Fritz, performing psychic surgery on the faithful, three loud mouths quoting Darfri John, a rather fragrant incense maker from Sri Aurobindo's, one wandering sadhu wandering on. One lab assistant to a quantum physicist turned New Age pyramid marketer peddling magical water. One chiropractor, two Reiki masters, a homeopathic kinesiologist, a palm full of oily massage therapists in and out of bedrooms, uncricking necks and jump-starting meridians. Three chartered accountants diddling the books and a high-end psychic once hired to send gl sense glitches in corporate power. One Mary Kay millionaire, two trust fund babies, all hoovered clean long before they leave. One florid French painter hanging out in the foyer waiting for the master to declare his wizardry. A brawny Austrian philosopher renaming himself Vinnie. Eleven Aussies, mostly bronze, expected to perform words like g'day. One iffy guy with a black-toothed grin hiding out in a basement room rumoured to have been a pedophile. Seven twenty-somethings singing passionately in Polish, dunking each other in the pool. Eight cool Kiwis, two hot Russians, half a pint of warm Brits. Four Dutch waiters over six foot four. A clutch of Canadians hunting green cards, one woos an ex stripper with a pawn shop glitter bit, ditches her a week post vows. Four sous chefs, six line cooks, thirteen hopeful waitresses, half a dozen handymen quietly hammering, screwing towel hooks, hanging mirrors in the bathrooms of the waitresses. A twelve pack of preteens, a skewed diamond of little leaguers, one gifted kid in a wheelchair. Five barefoot toddlers with mucky faces and an eight-year-old sociopath pied pipering the lilies over the highway and deep into the cornfields. Two single mums, sorry, six single mums, two jilted dads, two trenchant lesbian couples candying the kids, cold shouldering the parents, three women with cancer careening around the master, expecting to be healed. They all pass, three, two, one, through dorm room, 203. One man on the quiet, lifting lacy lingerie from the laundry room, Norma Jean, soul twin, with an urgent smile, tangled in a sheet, exposing a nipple at her window. One two-timing double bass jazz genius, one real Broadway dancer from Cats, one concert pianist, with arthritic, perfect pitch. One opera baritone, his soprano spurned in Berlin. One gay DJ wearing headphones like a tiara. One emo prima ballerina who goes Jim Morrison in a hotel bathroom a month after leaving. Seven lead guitarists, four half-decent drummers, a full gospel choir, enough brass for Motown, two dozen amateur thespians monologuing to save the world, a dresser from London's West End, ready to rip the stitches out of physical existence, a pathological narcissist who will one day die of self-awareness, a balding blues diva, an aging would-be country queen, an ex-punk rocker he'd opened for DOA in Regina, and a couple of writers, the fiction gal, now hobnobbing Toronto's writerly royalty, the poet handling histories shamelessly. Wow, my goodness! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that was so wonderfully insane. <laughs> Such a tongue twister to read. I can't believe I almost pulled it off without messing it up. <laughs> you did pull it off. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, amazing.
This is dorm room 214. Under the blown glass angels with gold dipped heads strung up by their halos, a poster of Rossetti's Lilith, Klimt's Kiss, or Magpied from The Barn, our swap shop where almost anything you imagine miraculously appears soon after you think of it. Like the soda shop chair in front of the window where the pole likes to fuck me at night with the lights on and the sprawling threadbare chase behind the gauzy sarong wall where one night three of us completely ignored Kubrick's eyes wide shut, discovered what yoga was really for, two Aussie girls and that French cyclist with River Phoenix hair. This Dutch guy says my place reminds him of a Turkish bazaar, a harem, a Babylonian shrine. He likes to play harmonica in the shower, admire his chest in that mosaic mirror above the sink where the German wrote Ich liebe dich with my daughter's alphabet stickers and I thought German had a dirty ring. Half the place, bed hops, so hard to say no. To say no seems ungrateful, like refusing Godiva's chocolates, silk wedding saris, a foot massage. The ashram in words, merci and we oui, talk, ya, yeah, see, si, sure baby. And uh, while I'm being risque, I'm gonna read the foot massage which has a word in it that might offend everyone. Probably not everyone. <laughs> okay, this is for YouTube. The foot massage. Her last lover danced flamenco, wore voluminous Stalia dresses. Lie back, she says. I dangle my calves over the edge of her bed. My daughter's in the dining hall downstairs with the other kids. Only a thin wall separates this room and the guru's visiting room. She flames a wand of incense, jabs it in a potted palm, unfolds my cotton flounces. Cross-legged on the rug, she rests my foot on her thigh when she parted her lover's thighs, ruffles fanned into flower petals like the thousand dollar lotus, she says, cunt melting at the center. The muskiness of sandalwood coils she oils my foot, twists each toe, slicks her thumbs along the arch, kneads the heel, spreads oil from ankle to knee, ankle to knee, ankle to where next door, to people visiting the master, laughter on the other side, shh, and tosses my skirts wide. Um, let's see. Uh, I might, um, here I guess, it's a sideways one. Path to the inner sanctum. It's a swoon of the hall, lit along the edges like cinema stairs my feet glowing against oily plush. I give myself to this path over and over with an aptitude for devotion that must be the remnant of a past life. But I'm not something holy. Only on my best days am I worth saving. Deeper with each foot call, boards creaking hollow. What is real if he says this is a dream? All the sages say it too, the veil of Maya. Sadhus smoking ganja, waiting for it to lift. Dervishes whirling into the center towards that pearl of stillness. The floor swings beneath me, suspended. Whenever I walk to his room, there's an unstitching in the chest, a loosening in this corset of bones. Sometimes I wish only a cave, but who am I fooling? The silence would eat me whole. The veneer walls contract and I'm struck with deja vu. I'm a bell of memory, all other visits vibrating against this one. A voice fills the shell of my ear, resonant and elongated as whale song. He chants, you're looping, looping the jar of consciousness, crack. My body sways, spinal fluid hums. Perhaps this time 
I'll be remade, undone. Um, do I have time for one more? Yes. <laughs> what shall I read? I. Uh, you want a monologue or a risque poem or something romantic? <laughs> romantic. Romantic. Okay. I haven't done that thing yet. I haven't. Okay. okay. This is the my wedding poem. It's called Heart Sutra, and I have a um, a Buddhist quote here actually: "Gate gate paragate gate body svaha." which uh, means gone, gone, completely gone, uh, completely gone beyond enlightenment hail. And the words are, wo are woven in through this poem. My child plucks petals in the secret garden cafe on the eve of my wedding, fills her plastic beaded handbag, the one my father bought her. Both my parents at the ashram, my fiance's mother from Regina, his Harvard genius brother, the awkward conjunction of genetics and a desire to transcend the world. The musicians hover between science and art, tuning their instruments by ear, by heart. They can measure it now, its frequency, the heart, not its rhythm, but a finer resonance, something electromagnetic, the slow hail of a rose swelling. My bridesmaid hunches and giggling fits when she's nervous. My daughter fidgets her silk flowers on the shoes. My father tugs his French cuffs and we head towards my groom. The garden blooms with touchy, with sorry, the garden blooms with devotees flying in and out of standing meditation under fading September skies, gone, completely gone. The guru hasn't shown he's beyond the world in some sort of altered state by sundown. Fairy globes sparkle on the deck, illuminate glittery paper hearts pinned to the backs of chairs, railings, tree trunks, love notes, shining on table legs, swinging from thorns on the primrose vine. Hail the savour of sweetness on the buffet table, devotional offerings, Rose water lassi, toffee profiterole tower, passion fruit pavlova, marshmallowy potache mlechko, the enlightenment of sugar waiting beyond the ceremony on the other shore. Our, bas our best man sobs, clutches the podium as he reads, his comb over lifting in the breeze. Our vows hail the elusive sound of the heart in Sanskrit. Anahata means unstruck, unharmed. They say a room full of people in heart meditation creates a silent field others might fall into. My daughter scaddles petals on our feet. My love sinks to one knee, asks my child to be his child. If we could peel away the facade of the world, all we'd see is light. Thanks everyone.